I just wanted to share with everyone my new tank here. So this is my first attempt at a brackish pufferfish tank. So this is very new territory for me. Uh, I did quite a bit of research before I set it up. Uh, and it's been up and running for about two months now. Just uh, first, a few things about this actual, the physical tank is, um, I actually found this tank. It was just lying on a curb on the sidewalk and someone had just thrown it out. A perfectly good tank. So I just, uh, I couldn't resist. I picked it up and it was heavy as hell, but I carried it home. Just cleaned it up and checked to see if everything was working and the light was still working. Everything. It was a perfectly good tank that someone had thrown out. So I just, rather than see it go to the landfill, I decided to turn it into something. Um, and everything you see in this tank has been either naturally sourced or I bought it used just because uh, I'm a very, very avid environmentalist and conservationist. So I don't just uh, believe that it's better to just buy stuff used and stuff if you can. Um, actually, sorry. One thing is this, the, there is one thing new in this tank and it's this, the internal filter, which is uh, actually very powerful. It's a 20 watt, doesn't look like much, but it's a 20 watt um, internal filter that pumps up to, I believe up to a thousand liters an hour, which is very powerful for a small internal filter. Um, this filter can actually, you can actually use it in a tank up to, I believe um, like three times the size of this tank. So this tank's only about 20 gallons. Uh, so it's a bit of powerful, a bit too powerful for this tank, but it's okay because from what I read, these uh, puffer fish, they need really good filtration. Um, yeah, everything else, the wood is completely naturally sourced. All some small pieces of driftwood lying on the ground there. Just, I uh, just driftwood from my other tanks. I just put it in. All the substrate you see, the sand and the very, very fine gravel was bought used. Even the puffer fish were, um, purchased from another, uh, another uh, from a seller who was trying to, I guess, get rid of them. So yeah, I couldn't resist. It was perfect. Uh, so the other thing, oh yeah, and this was even bought used, is this um, reef salt. So just to let people know, I didn't know this before that, is that um, you have to use reef salt or marine salt for brackish water. Uh, to make brackish water. Um, I almost made the mistake of purchasing aquarium salt, which apparently does not make brackish water. So it's good I did my research. And that's a very important thing uh, to make note of if you're planning to set up a brackish water tank. Uh, so from what I read, I didn't put too much, uh, I didn't want to put too much salt, not as much as they recommended, because I, I was told that you should acclimate the puffer fish in stages. So I basically started off with about one cup for every two gallons. So I basically put two cups of this reef salt, uh, this reef salt into the tank to get them acclimated first. And then I gradually added a bit more during water changes and it seems to be it seems to work uh because this tank's been up and running for two months now and these puffer fish have been in here for over a month so um yeah so that seems to be good enough i do not use a hydrometer to check the salinity i know a lot of people online are saying that you should check but i think these fish are quite tolerant of the salinity and given that there are different sizes the salinity you're not gonna hit the younger puffer fish the smaller ones apparently need less salinity than the the more mature one there so i have to kind of make a compromise but they seem very tolerant of the uh the levels so i got uh two green spotted puffers in here you see the big one which is actually my favorite. The uh, I already gave him a name, called him uh, 
blimpy. And there's one small figure eight puffer. Uh, and these guys are very aggressive. Um, I'll probably post another video of their feeding, which is actually fun because I give them a lot of um, uh, raw food. They love to eat raw or live food. So I'll put that up in another video. Um, yeah. Oh, some something very, uh, just to let you know, plants do not survive in brackish water. And I don't care if people tell you Anubias is okay, it does not survive. As you can see right here, the Anubias in the middle has started to develop holes in it. It just, it won't survive in, with the salt. Um, this hornwort that is supposed to be a very impervious plant does not do well either. I mean, when I first put it in, a lot of it started to die right away and I could see it. But for some reason, it has acclimated so far and it is starting to actually grow, but very slowly, I've noticed. But it is surviving because hornwort is a pretty amazing plant. Um, just to let you know, if you're going to put any plants in a brackish tank, I would just put hornwort. Uh, like I can tell you right now, Nubias just does not survive, even though some people online said it was okay to put it in, but um, it doesn't seem to work. Anyway, yeah, that, that's about it. Um, I really, really <laughs> love these fish. They're so cute. I've always wanted to keep green spotted puffers, um, and I am successfully keeping them. And I'm taking extra good care of these guys because um, I do not want to see them pass. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I'll keep you guys updated on this tank because this is my new, uh, my little project. And I want to actually find a way of scaping it a bit nicer because I've been looking online and I've noticed a lot of people, mo actually no one, has a nicely scaped uh, brackish pufferfish tank. Everyone has something that looks like mine right now. But there must be a way to scape you know, to escape this so it looks a bit better. Uh, hopefully I'll provide that in another update. Anyway, thanks for watching. Leave any comments.